Hello everyone, today I'm excited to talk about that incredible movie, The Matrix, and how The Matrix can help us understand the world we live in just that much better. Hello everyone, today I'm talking about The Matrix, the story, the movie. Stories and movies are vehicles for us to understand our, our humanity, you know, whether it's The Notebook helping us understand love from that perspective or whether it's Jaws helping us understand our intrinsic fear of things we don't know or don't understand. Storytelling is so important. It's at the heart of what we do as humans to expand our horizons. And The Matrix is, in my opinion, is one of the best vehicles I've ever seen. I would put The Matrix up with, you know, the, the, the Yoga Sutra, the Bible, the Quran, with, um, you know, all those sort of stories. Homer's, Homer's Odyssey, Tale of Two Cities. It is epic. And in a hundred years, I'm sure it will get the respect it's due. Right now, it's just a pop film. But... I think people look at it a bit differently. I want to help you give insights into why I might think that about The Matrix. And if you haven't seen it, pause this video and go watch at least the first one because you know, it's, it's an incredible film. So as always, I'm going to begin with a quote on the subject. And that quote is, I know you're out there. I can feel you now. And I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. I'm going to hang up this phone and then I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. I'm going to show them a world without you. A world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice. I leave to you. Neo's phone message to the machines. These are goosebumps, genuine goosebumps as I read that because that's my mantra, you know, that's all I've ever wanted to do is to show people the borderless boundless opportunities of the real world, not the conformist structured world that we're imprisoned in. And I feel like, you know, me and Neo would be homeboys if it, you know, in a, if it was a real, if it was a real person. So, what is, what is The Matrix? For those who haven't seen it, and for those who have, they probably need to remind The Matrix is very basic. We live in a world of um, technology, which I'm kind of like we do now, but there's a, there's, a, there's a point where we our technology becomes so advanced that we're unaware of its control of us to the point where it begins farming us as batteries, as fuel cells. There's a nuclear war and we can no longer use traditional um, fuel, fuel, fuel sources and humans are farmed and they're put into like little battery cells and they're farmed so the machines can have a power source to continue. However, what they learn is that humans aren't meant to be farmed. So they create a matrix, a construct, an idea construct where people can live in their heads in a system where they can have a job and have a family and all that sort of it's good stuff to keep them alive when they're really just in a battery cell. It's mind-blowing stuff and I want to talk about some of the parallels and analogies to the day-to-day -day life. So my personal story is I remember seeing, I, had some, I think it was my mate Tom and my mate was he went to the cinemas and watched The Matrix and I just went, what is this man? Like what is this? I've never seen a film anything like it, you know, it was so unconventional and I thought, and I think I was like one of the, you know, it was opening weekend perhaps, I thought I don't know if people will like this film, I like this film, I don't know if I like it, but it became a cult phenomenon because it struck at a chord. And I knew from that minute that I needed to start asking better questions, just like Neo. And I kind of got intrinsically what the Wyskowski brothers were trying to say about the world and I feel like I, I took something from it. So what are the themes from The Matrix that really resonated with me? What, what's the hard-hitting stuff that we can help us live our lives outside of that particular movie? So I want to talk to you about how it works. So the first one is Plato. So the, the first theme it draws from is the most amazing concept that Plato talked about 2,500 years ago. So Plato had this concept of reality, and he explained it as called the allegory of the cave. So he says that imagine that there's some people and they're born in a cave, right? And it's a deep, deep dark cave, and they're looking at this world. And the world is of shadows and illusion and of things that seem to be real but aren't real. And they live their lives in this situation. Until one day they turn around and realize that at the entrance of the cave, which they didn't even know was there, there, were, there was a flame and people were holding sort of puppets and you know, little things to create this illusion of a world in that cave. And they go, wow, there's a real world out there. So that obviously they step out of the cave into this amazing, beautiful world with green trees, waterfalls, the planet we live in, right? And just like for everyone, it takes their time to adjust, to be able to see things the way they are, something very interesting happens. They go back into the cave. 
it's too overwhelming. It's 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 just too much. And obviously you can find the allegory of the cave in the matrix where so many people are just happy to be plugged in as long as they're getting fed the truth. As long as they can get iPhones, KFC, and the politicians tell them what they want to hear, they're happy. That's about it. It's a real good, alle uh, the allegory of the cave is written deep into the matrix. So what is a matrix? So number two, helping with the themes of the movie, matrix is a construct. So it's a world of illusion. So a matrix is something that comes from something else. And you know whether it's Theravada Buddhism or whether it's you know um, the the Vedas that I think I think scientists are probably saying written twelve thousand years ago now twelve thousand it's <laughs> a lot of truth there that Maya the world of illusion is not our true world and the Matrix is that it's a construct it's a it's a it's a belief system and within that world is the illusionary world. Morpheus is, is, is one of the key characters. So Morpheus means the fashioner or molder, a person who calls up shapes from his dreams. So he's able to produce shapes from his dreams. And the thing I love about Morpheus is that he shapes Neo. So if you've seen the movie, Neo is just a code, he's just a normal bloke, normal person going through his life just like everyone else. But, but Morpheus believes in him, dreams that he's the one, dreams that he can fix everything, and Neo becomes that. It's a great sort of idea about manifestation. And then we have the main protagonist, Neo. So Neo means new. And his, his real name is, his real last name in the film is Anderson. So he basically becomes Neo Anderson. So Anderson means son of man. So new son of man. So this is the new enlightened being, the person who's coming forth from all this crazy techno bubble, psycho, delusionary, distraction, Kim Kardashian, wars, petrol, you know. He's coming out of that and he's new, he's fresh, he's enlightened. Another great concept. We're seeing collective consciousness explode at the moment. We're seeing really cool, amazing people pop out of the woodwork just like Neo, just like in the Matrix. So the other concept is our machine overlords. So we like to think we're in control. And you know, I heard a funny, like, I don't know if it was a meme or a story, but someone said, I think Seinfeld actually, he goes, if aliens were looking down on us right now and they saw us at a park with our dogs, and they saw someone being led around by a dog picking up its poo, and they had to decide who's in charge. So, so the dogs are in charge, right? And you can start to understand that we forget that we like the illusion of control, but machines are in control. I mean, what happens if the traffic lights went out? What happens if refrigerators shut down? What happens if our power went out? We'd be in a little bit of trouble. And what happens in the matrix is that we start losing touch with reality, you start forgetting how reliant we are on these machines and how, how if that link was to break, we'd be in real trouble. They used to, the old saying is, remove three mills from any civilization and you have anarchy. Well, when you're dependent on certain things and you're removed, then things can go wrong. The other, um, the other part of the matrix is the concept of people rejecting the concept of the matrix, and I see this all the time. You know, the student will arrive and the teacher is ready, and the teacher will leave and the student is ready. And sometimes, when I'm talking to people about the beautiful world that has come open to my eyes and the, and the, the happiness level I'm at now, they're like, mm, nah, "That's all junk, crazy, nutso stuff." Um, turn back the TV on, back back on, thank you, and I'm going to go buy an ab cycle and a and an ab roller and go eat KFC. Because they're walking back into the matrix, and that's okay. I used to, I used to, I used to go back to me. No, no, no. You didn't listen. You didn't hear me properly. Now, what I understand is some people prefer to live in the matrix, and they're just at that level. At that level, and because of the world of duality, the people who choose to ignore the truth open up possibilities for people to explore the truth. So they're very valuable to us, and they will find their way. We all get there in the end. It just depends if it's on your deathbed or on your um, morning bed. And finally, the agents, Agent Smith, the, 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 the demon, the, the, the control mechanism. Interestingly, dressed like an FBI agent, idea of authority has focus and control and is looking for non-conformers. So, you know, sort of like you can imagine an FBI detective who doesn't have a particular case but is out there keeping his eye out for radicals or, or people trying to buck the system. And interestingly, these agents aren't machines. So there is the machine world, but the agents like Agent Smith who said Mr. Anderson, <laughs> um, they are programs. So they are constructs, they are ideas, right? Just like the things in the matrix, which is interesting. The power we give governments, the power we give the FBI to snoop on us and turn on the microphone when we're using Facebook on the app, we give them that power. We construct them as being these important figures. We ask them for permission. Um, if you're gay, you ask them for permission to get married. If you're... Um, Islamic you ask them permission to build a mosque. If you're, um, you know, you ask them for permission to travel. We, we, we give them so much power they don't really have, and they're really just programs walking around trying to keep people conformed. So, The Matrix is an incredible movie, and I'm eternally blessed that it came into being and how it did so well. 
If you haven't seen it, watch it. If you have, watch it again. And maybe with the benefit of this video, maybe you also see some of the things I did. I'm sure if you've got any comments about things you've seen that I might not have recognized in this video, I'm happy to see them via email or in the comment section. I can't wait to see you we'll unplug from the matrix and see you tomorrow because this is what this life transformation system is about, is getting unplugged and we'll catch up then. But until then, goodbye.